So good afternoon and thank you all for taking the time uh, to be here. I know how busy everyone is, as this is one of the busiest times of the academic year. But I think we're all agreed on the importance of coming together across our different areas to get a sense of the working of the university as a whole. I wanted to create an opportunity for us to review and evaluate what we've achieved and to look ahead to what needs doing. It's now the midpoint of my provostship, as the Registrar has said, and it's also the midpoint of the current strategic plan. The other day, my eldest daughter, who was sitting her leaving cert this year, said that uh, she was considering the University of Groningen in the Netherlands as her first choice, and she had all the brochures. Of course, I'd like her to stay closer to home and attend this university. That is my passion. The truth is, when I talked about student mobility, I didn't foresee that happening at undergraduate level quite this fast. And her friends are the same. They're looking at universities around Europe and indeed around the world, and including the UK, despite its much higher fees. We can no longer assume that Irish school leavers will elect to come here. Talk of a globalised higher education system isn't mere rhetoric. Competition isn't about the colleges just around the corner. It's worldwide. So, all told, trends discernible five years ago are now evolving fast and new situations have emerged. So all, uh, I've identified six key current influences on higher education. First, there's increased staff and student mobility, with people and projects moving rapidly and easily between institutions and countries. And second, there's the development of global academic networks and partnerships, which I've already mentioned. We're now habituated to inter-institutional initiatives at a national level, like AMBER and CONNECT and Molecular Medicine Ireland, and soon we'll have similar international initiatives. Third, there's the increased centrality of universities to economic and social development. 21st century universities are powerhouses of the regions and cities they serve. We educate the highly skilled graduates who drive growth and we do the research that's needed across the board for high-tech government as for government in policy areas. And fourth, there's the rising population. Now this is a global phenomenon. It's not a European one. In many EU countries, populations are falling. But Ireland definitely does not follow the European trend. Over the next decade, Irish student population uh, entering third level is set to grow by up to a massive 25%. And fifth, there's the changing nature of the job market and the work environment. Key developments here are the digital workplace and the need for entrepreneurial skill sets, whether you become an entrepreneur or whether you work in a large uh, multinational. The idea of a profession and a job for life is evolving and evolving rapidly into something more flexible and diverse. Graduates have to be prepared to manage such complex career challenges. And sixth, there's the decrease in state funding to universities. Let's look at this a bit more closely. Decrease in state funding was a dominant theme in my inaugural address, but I only spoke of it as an Irish problem. In fact, it now emerges, it's a global phenomenon. Private contributions are increasing and direct state subventions are decreasing. I don't think this trend is booked by the announcement in this week's budget. Of course, we welcome the first increase in state funding to third level. We do hope to see more and greater state investment, but the tendency around the world suggests that we're moving from the 20th century system of high state support for universities to one based on non-exchequer private funding, more like the system, in fact, that Trinity operated under for its first 300 years, fees, philanthropy, and commercial activities. We're moving from a system of limited access and small student numbers to broadening access and higher numbers. This is a major transition. It could be, in fact, that the few decades after the Second World War are the part that uh, is different in the total history of universities, and that we're returning to really the kind of funding that universities used to have before then. And as a country, we have yet to come to terms with what's happening. 
and to put in place a funding system that is fit for these future challenges. But here in Trinity, I believe we're transitioning well. We're not where we were five years ago. We've moved from a, an approach focused on petitioning the government to act to one focused on acting ourselves. We've strongly urged action, of course, particularly at the 2014 IOA Symposium, which we convened. But it's not, government funding is not a decision that we have direct control over. Ultimately, it's a nettle for the government to grasp, and I don't underestimate the difficulty for them. So our focus has rightly switched to what we do have control over, growing our non-exchequer revenue and becoming more financially independent. To excel at this, we will need to have autonomy in our decision-making and governance. This was another theme of my inaugural speech, and thankfully, it's an area that has seen improvement. The over-regulated environment which came in with austerity has, to some extent, receded. There has been some relaxation of, for instance, in the employment control framework. But we have to continue making the case for universities' right to act independently. This is particularly important in a situation where the onus is on universities to generate their own revenues. Trinity is lucky. It's a reservoir and generator of talent. When you get this many great minds together, pooled from all around the world, you get great ideas. The way we educate is determined by what and how we, re we research. Our initiatives in public engagement, our decisive contributions to crucial world challenges, all this comes from our confidence in the strength and quality of our research. <laughs> research and scholarship is at the heart of all we do. What this means is that we are committed to the search for truth no matter where it may lead, as it says in our college statutes. Thank you very much.